Now it is India's third moon shot and the most ambitious uh, mission uh, towards uh, the moon, which is the Chandrayaan-3. And uh, with uh, less than uh, uh, three days uh, to go for this uh, launch as well, we are uh, joined in by uh, Dr. Surendra Pal Singh Ji as well, who is the former director of ISRO. Let's go across and try to understand as to what are the nitty gritties and what makes it challenging. And this time around, uh, what we can go ahead and expect uh, with the Chandrayaan-3 too. Sir, first and foremost, thank you for speaking to Republic Media Network. Thank you. Uh, so we saw that the Luna 25 crashed as well. It left later than uh, the Chandrayaan 3 too, but we saw that it has crashed as well and there was no soft landing that was possible. Any sort of inferences that we can draw from the Luna 25 and the Chandrayaan 2 mission to the Chandrayaan 3 mission? Well, first it's a very unfortunate part that uh, Luna 25 uh, crashed. And you know, Luna 25 is an automated system. Okay, so what do they call it? Auto station. Mm -hmm. While uh, they verify and uh, it's supposed to be, a, there should be a loop inside which you take care. It is supposed to work, if, suppose you would have uh, soft landed, should have, it would have worked for one year. Okay, they had a RTG generator inside it. They had similar experiment as we are going to have it in Chandrayaan 3, almost similar experiment. Now, what have, must have happened is that one of the commands must have gone wrong. See, internally generated commands must have gone wrong when they generate the uh, trigger the command. So, from the 100 kilometers orbit, when they were deboosting it to a lower frequency, it has, uh, I mean, it must have gone into a spin mode or there must have something else must have happened because it has not come out and then it crashed. But we cannot say that uh, it crashed because of some technological thing. See, such software glitches do happen. In my opinion, it's a software glitch. They have not explained it. I would also loosely say that somebody is, has done a PhD and if you ask him to appear in a say, graduation examination and if he doesn't do well, it doesn't mean the capability and competence of the person is less. See, they have come after almost 50 years into this field. Okay, And there must have been some different reasons. It was supposed to be launched in 21, uh, 2021. No, it was launched now. So, unfortunate thing did happen and maybe a failure analysis report, if it becomes public, we'll know about it. But I don't think our mission persons will draw any inference from this one. Mm -hmm. So, these two things are independent. Okay. If it would have worked, mm -hmm. we were not in competition, you know. Mm. So, it would have complemented, all those scientific results would have complemented to Chandrayaan 3. Mm -hmm. And uh, Russia is a friendly country. Mm. You know, from Aryabhatta onwards, they have helped us, so mm. I remember everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now going ahead and looking at it, the ISRO seems to be quite confident of the fact that this time there will be a soft landing. So looking at the soft landing in itself, uh, what is that which is making ISRO very confident? And uh, I would also want you to shed more light uh, into the laser Doppler, uh, you know, uh, velocimetry uh, instrument as well, which is basically called as the third eye, which was not present in the Chandrayaan 2, but is present in the Chandrayaan 3. And uh, what are the sort of differences that we are speaking in terms of algorithms? See, it's uh, first and foremost is, it's uh, almost like Chandrayaan 2, okay? We are having a communication with the orbiter. So as communication links are concerned, they're almost like this. What we planned earlier was that uh, 200 kilobits of communication link, which has become 500 kilobits. So we'll get a faster data rate, okay? Now, what are the changes done? First is, there's a more propellant put inside the lander itself. Mm. So suppose if it's not able to land on a proper place, which our desired place, then still it can go round and come back after a few days or maybe even after one month it can land. I mean that sort of capability is built in. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that a uh, lot of software changes have been done. That takes and the, you know dispersion limits have been increased. See when we talk about uh, earlier say suppose we had a 50 Newton you know dispersions. Now it has been made to 80 Newton thrusters. Now, earlier we had a five uh, rockets, you know, which was slightly more, it was not slightly, it was quite more than what is needed. Now we have got four rockets. Mm -hmm. The slew rate, slew rate is, uh, you know, where we can control the flow of the, uh, you know, liquid inside it, mm -hmm. like hydrogen, oxidizer, mm -hmm. because these are all liquid uh, engines. Mm -hmm. They can be controlled, they can be stopped. So we can control it, we can also the 
nozzle also can be changed slightly. It's called slew rate. It's like this, you know. Suppose you want to uh, change the, uh, you know, you take a water tap. Mm. Okay, I can always change it uh, flow. If when I, if I make a full full throttle, full water will come out. Otherwise, I can I can control that sort of thing. Roughly, it's not exactly same, mm -hmm. but roughly like that. So we can uh, control the thrust. We can vary the thrust. We can have two motors or four, I mean four thrusters or two thrusters, mm -hmm. as per the need requirement. Then there is a closed loop inside it, mm -hmm. okay, and the closed loop will take care how much it should be there. Mm -hmm. So now when it, uh, that, so we have got uh, three stages here, you know, rough braking, mm -hmm. and after that navigation. So presently navigation, what we get is uh, through the what's over is there, you know, gyros inside, etc. Mm -hmm. And then we have got a laser gyro inside, which is mm -hmm. very accurate. Mm -hmm. But any gyro has got a dispersion, you know, okay. it deviates from an end. So we have got a star sensor. We had a star sensor there also, mm -hmm. but we have got a star sensor, and these gyros will be getting calibrated just in the during the rough braking, and after that there is the. So there will be absolute calibration of the navigation. Mm -hmm.